subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hi, learners. Welcome to Senior High School R on Joy Learning Channel. As always, my name is Wisdom Agbesinyan. And of course, many call me Wizzy One. Are you wondering why I'm in lab code? Don't wonder, because this is the language of the game. So we want to do something practical. That is why I'm in a lab coat. In this lesson, we want to look at preparation of standard solution from solid solute. Yes, solid. The solid, what are we going to do? The last time you used tablespoon, you fetch salt, into water, then you form salt solution. But that one, we cannot describe it as standard because you didn't use scientific instrument. So, here in our lab, we want to use scientific instrument to do that. So we can call it a standard solution. What is a standard solution? Any solution whose concentration is accurately known can be described as standard solution. So what do I do? Since we are dealing with solid, the first thing that should come to mind is to weigh something. If we are weighing, we want to determine the mass of that thing. So we should be able to calculate the mass of the solid substance that we are going to use for the preparation of the standard solution. So if I want to weigh, what do I need? I need a chemical balance. Very important. So with me here, I have a very nice friend here. And this is my chemical balance. Can you see it? Yes. It reads to two decimal places. So in our senior high school labs, we use chemical balance that reads to two decimal places. We can have one reading to four decimal places and that is highly accurate those ones are used in analytical labs so those of you who become industrialists working in the industry working in analytical labs of industries you use such analytical balances if you go to ghana standards authority you will see them there so you can take a tour one day go there you see them there. What else? We are talking about preparing standard solutions. So I will need a volumetric flask. Oh, this is my friend, very good friend, volumetric flask. This one, its capacity is 250 cm cubed. So it means that if I fill this conical, the standard volumetric flask with a solution to that mark there, then I have the volume to be 250 cm cubed. Solid. Yes, I must dissolve the solid. So what do I need? I need water. Now, of course, distilled water. So that impurities in the water will not interfere with anything. What at all am I going to use to prepare <laughs> the solution? Oh, I need a solid substance but here I have sodium carbonate what do I need to transfer the solution after dissolving in a little amount of water oh I have funnel to do the transfer like that 
You see, good. What else do I need? I need to weigh so I can have a little beaker. Please note that the beaker should be clean and dry. Then, of course, because we are learning, I'll also need dropping pipette to top up the solution to the mark there. Are we set? Yes. Can we continue? Yes. So I have that. I have volumetric flask. I have my funnel. I have my water. So distilled water in wash bottle. What else do I need? I need that is there, my balance and that. Beaker for weighing. If you are experienced, you don't need this. So you can leave it out, still get it done correct. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. You can talk about stirring rod to stir, to dissolve. Just as you put sugar in water or salt in water, you use the spoon to stir for it to dissolve faster. So here with me, I have spatula. So you can also use spatula just to fetch and then of course to stir to dissolve if you don't have stirring rod. So you can add those ones also to the list. Okay. Now since we are dealing with solid substance, we have to calculate mass that we are going to weigh on the balance transfer, dissolve, and simple, straightforward. So let's pick a question to illustrate. List four pieces of apparatus you would need to prepare a standard solution in the laboratory. So with all those things I have listed, I have four there. You see. So you can have we have steering rod there, that for the dissolution, and so on and so forth. B part of the question, describe briefly how you would prepare 250cm cubed of 0.100 mole per dm cubed sodium carbonate solution in the laboratory. So I need sodium carbonate, it's here. What is the volume? 250. Okay, so if it is 250, I go to the store, pick 250 cm cubed of volumetric flask. If it is 500, you go and pick 500. If it is 1000 cm cubed, you go and pick 1000 cm cubed. What is the concentration? 0 0.100 mole per dm cubed. What else do I need? Since I'm talking about mass, then I need molar mass of the substance. Sodium hydroxide, sorry, sodium carbonate. So the relative atomic masses of the atoms making up sodium carbonate is given. So I can calculate molar mass. Okay. So let's calculate molar mass. So, molar mass of sodium carbonate equal to the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23. So, 23 times 2 plus that of carbon is 12. So, 12 times 1. That of oxygen is 
16. So 3 times 16. So that gives me 106 grams per mole. Note, concentration is given. So C or sodium carbonate equal to 0 0.100 mole per dm cubed. Take note, the volume is also given. So volume of solution is 250 cm cubed. So what do I do? Concentration, volume, molar mass. So what should I do? If I know volume and I know concentration, I can calculate amount of substance. Don't you see that? Yes, because I know that concentration is called to amount of substance on volume. So I can calculate amount of substance. Therefore, N is equal to CV. Carry column Vite. Vice Chancellor. Village Katkis. Village Champion. Which one will you choose to help you remember quickly? Choose for yourself. So let's do substitution. Don't forget, the volume must always be in DM cubed. Therefore, one way I can do it is concentration 0 0.100 times 250. But the 250 must be converted to DM cubed. So I can divide the expression by 1000. That takes care of that. So that gives me, oh, go bring your calculators quickly. Yes, let's do it together. Okay, so 0 0.1 times 250 divided by 1000 will give me 0 0.025. So 0 0.025 more. Did you get the same thing? Yes. Good. Let's continue. That is one way. I can also decide to change the volume before I do my substitution. So, if I want to change the volume before I do my substitution, I'm going to have V equal to 250 divided by 1000 equal to 0 0.250 dm cubed. So I do my substitution into N is equal to CV. C is 0 0.100 times 0 0.250. And that will give me the same thing. Or oh, check. 0 0.1 times 0 0.025. So it's 0 0.25. So check if it is the same. Also checking. Good. 0.025 more. So somebody can also use this one. Somebody can also use the first one. Okay, I don't want the, the, the first two. I want it another way. Okay, you can also do it this way. So I will have N equal to CV equal to 0 0.100 times 250 times 10 power negative 3. I can also do it that way. So if you want that one, choose one for yourself. So you can be independent. Exponent negative 3. Okay. That one also gives me the same. So three ways. Choose one for yourself. But the last one. You have to take your time. If you don't know, you forget or you omit the negative there. Oh, you are wrong. If you omit this one here, you are wrong. So, choose one that you can easily handle under examination conditions. Is that okay? Yes. So, can we continue? We are looking for mass. And we know that there is a relation between amount of substance, mass, and molar mass. So, N equal to mass on molar mass. Do I know mass? No, that is what I'm looking for. Do I know N? Yes, 0 
Do I know molar mass? Yes, 106. Oh, my problem is solved. Is it beautiful? Yes. Is it interesting? Yes. Okay, then let's continue. So make mass the subject because that is what we are looking for. So making mass the subject, I can have mass equal to amount of substance times molar mass. What is amount of substance 0 0.025? What is molar mass 106? So multiply that and then we move on. So our answer 0 0.025 is already on the calculator. So just multiply by 106 and that gives me the mass I'm looking for 2.65 grams <sighs> you see straightforward okay what well, next now I have my mass so this is the mass I'm going to weigh on the balance dissolve in a little amount of distilled water transfer to the volume that I need 250cm cubed top up to the mark oh I'm done you see very very simple okay now we have our mass to be weighed and as I said the balance reads to two decimal places if you are placing the balance the balance must be stable Oh, my own mm -mm, is shaking. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want it that way. So I have to shift it until... Aha. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. Right. So now it's stable. I can do my weighing. So I have my clean, dry beaker here. Small one. Let me see the capacity. This one is 50 cm cubed capacity. So when you turn on the balance, wait until it is stable before you place this. So when I place this on it, it will take the mass of the beaker. So you can record that one. And then you add your solid substance and Finding the substance plus the beaker will be recorded. Then you subtract the mass of the beaker from the mass of the substance and the beaker. Then you get the mass of the substance. But do I have to go that far? No. So all I have to do, I want 2.65 grams of the substance. So, ta the balance placing the beaker on it you tie it so when you tie it it goes back to 0, 0.00 so whatever substance you put into the beaker the balance will give you the mass of that substance so you don't need to be doing any subtraction there if you are wrong then everything will be affected so i have tied it now is 0, 0.00 Next, I place in the substance, have my spatula here like a spoon in your home. So anytime you want to remember spatula, is like spoon. There are some, both sides are flat, flat. But this one is like a spoon, you get. Yes. So what mass do I need? I need 2.65 grams. Okay, so I have this already. The mass of the beaker is off, so I put it, put the solid substance, I place it on it. Oh, this is 2.86. I don't need that one, I need 2.65. So take it off, pick some away. Place it back. Please don't pick substances from the beaker whilst it is on the balance. That way you 
decalibrate, it will affect the inner composition. So always you pick it off, do whatever you want to do and place it back. So take care of it. It's expensive, so take care of it. Okay, I have 1.99, but I want 2.65. So I want to add some 2.11 two 2.65 I want A little above, take some. Okay, so 2.65, that's a half there. Now I'll add little distilled water to dissolve my lab spoon. <laughs> that is the spatula. <laughs> so stir it to dissolve. Add a little. Is it dissolving? Yes, it is dissolving. Okay, so ready to transfer, please. In the process of transfer, lose nothing. Otherwise, the concentration will be less than expected or than what you have been asked to do. So we refer to it as quantitative transfer. It means you are transferring everything within experimental errors. So I want to transfer here. Lose nothing. So transfer. Next thing, I have to rinse what I have used to stir. Whether it's uh, the spatula or you are using stirring rod. So rinse everything. Please lose nothing and add all the rinsings to the content in the volumetric flask. Okay. So next thing is to swirl the flask. Don't shake, just well, so that if there is any other particle in there, everything must dissolve. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so I think that's it. Please take note. You can also do the transfer direct without dissolving the solid substance. So when you, after weighing, you just use water, use water to wash the solid substances down, direct like that. 
you wash it down like that. Ah, that way too, it will be very, very fast at your work. So when you do that, then you swirl the flask. So that the dissolution takes place in the volumetric flask. If it is big, if you are using one DM cubed volumetric flask is bigger than this, so we can do like that so that it will not be too heavy in your hands. You can do it like that. Okay, so I top up. The funnel can still be there because I want to be very fast. Take it, take this off, and then you pour the distilled water. Careful. Careful. Around 1 cm away from the calibration mark. Okay. So drop your funnel. Now I want to use my dropping pipette or dropper because we are now learning. So bring it to your eye level, pick that and drop, drop, drop. I said drop. Uh huh. Drop, 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 drop. Drop, drop, drop. Okay. Until the curve sits on the calibration mark. So I have topped up the solution to the calibration mark. What do I do? Last, you cock. And then you invert like that. You shake it like that. Okay. So I'm done. But in chemistry, you need to label. So what will be the label? The name of the substance you have used for the preparation, concentration, you can add date of preparation, and you can even add your name. So, my label will look like this. So, my label will look like this, 0.1. Zero zero more per dm cubed Na two CO three solution date of preparation today is fifteenth right so fifteen seven twenty twenty one name Easy one. Then you paste it on the volumetric flask so that whoever walks in will know that this is sodium carbonate solution. Concentration is 0 0.100 mole per dm cubed. Date of preparation 15th July 2021. Who prepared it? Easy one prepared that one. You get it. So it's as simple as that. Preparing standard solution using solid solutes. Now, is it true that there is something inside this thing? Let's justify and see if it is really true that there is something. So I have my litmus paper here.
This is red litmus paper. Wow, yes, there's something. See, it has turned blue. So it means that this solution is basic. It turns red litmus paper blue. So there is substance. That's why you must not drink colorless solution in the lab. Look at it. Just like water. So if you come, oh, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, then you go and grab this. See what you are drinking. You get it. Uh -huh. So take note, there is a chemical substance in that has caused the change. Okay. Okay, so that's it for the preparation. When you go back to school, go to the lab, practice it there for you to be so used to it. Because when you go out there, and you go to Ghana Standard Authority, these things are being done there for their analysis. So when you go there and they say, prepare standard solution, then you'll be there. Hey, my teacher has not taught me. Huh. Now you know. Okay. So that's it. So we can solve more questions, right? Yes. So we know. So what are the steps when you, if you followed carefully, we can spell out these. So we calculated the mass. So we have 2.65 grams. We put that in the beaker through the weighing, right? Yes. Then what did we do next? We added a little water to dissolve. And then what did we do? We transferred the resulting solution into the chosen volumetric flask that is 250 cm cubed. What did we do? We rinsed the spatula and the beaker. What did we do? We topped up to the calibration mark and then finally we inverted it for complete mixing. So since I know my mass, I'm going to have my mass here will be 2.65 grams of sodium carbonate is put in a beaker, then little distilled water added, blah, blah, transfer. What is the capacity of the volumetric flask? So three solution is transferred quantitatively means you are not losing anything don't lose anything into 250 cm cubed volumetric flask and then you continue from there is that okay yes okay so that's it if you were to be around me here i would have made you to also prepare your own is that okay because we will need this in the lab for volumetric analysis. So follow carefully so that we can follow through to volumetric analysis. Right, so let's look at a few questions. Look at this one. A 25 cm cubed of 2.00 mole per dm cubed KOA solution is diluted to 500 cm cubed. What is the concentration after? dilution you see uh -huh. you realize that when we dissolve this we added more water so what we dissolved we can find a concentration if we know the volume there we added more water it means we have diluted so we can do calculations on that okay so what do i have i have volume of KOH to be 25 cm cubed. I have concentration of KOH 2.00 mole per dm cubed. What else do I have? 
Now, they said that KOA solution is diluted too. So there is another volume. Oh, what is this? Yes. <laughs> you know it. If I have volume and another volume, what should come into mind? See, diluted. So the principle of dilution should come to mind. And the principle of dilution gives us a working formula. The dilution formula. That says that the initial concentration times the initial volume equal to final concentration times the final volume. Question is solved because we have volume there. Uh, sorry, concentration. So 25 cm cube V1 and then C1 diluted to 500. So it means that 500 is V2. What is the concentration after dilution? We are looking for C2. Question is solved. So make C2 the subject. Making C2 the subject is C2 equal to V1, C1 all on V2. So do the substitution and evaluation. You don't need to change to DMK because you are doing division. So C1 is 2.00 times V1 is 25, all on 500. So the 500 CM cubed, 25 CM cubed, CM cubed, CM cubed will cancel out, leaving the final unit that is more per DM cubed. Okay, what is your calculator? Grab your calculator, enter that. Use the division key on your calculator. Is that okay? So that you put everything together. So... I have 2.00 times 25, all on 500. What did you get? Okay, so 0 0.100 0 more per dm cubed. So that is the concentration after dilution. Is the answer reasonable? Yes. Is it correct? Yes. Let's check. See. V1 to V2. So the final volume is greater than the initial volume. So if the volume is increasing, it means that what will happen? Look at it. C equal to N on V. If N is constant, I will have C is inversely proportional to V. It is simple mathematics. So, <laughs> means that if concentration increases, volume will decrease. If volume increases, concentration will decrease. So that, they say, what is the concentration after dilution? So the concentration of the increased volume, what do you think will happen to the concentration? The concentration will drop, you see. So our answer is reasonable because the final concentration is less than the initial one because the initial volume is less than the final volume, you see. So if you are in an exam, that is how you can see whether what you are really doing is correct or not. If the final concentration were to be greater than the initial concentration, no. If the volume increases, the concentration must drop. So if the concentration increases as a result of volume increasing, then there is a problem with your work. So you can tell yourself, you don't need the angels of God to come and tell you that what you are doing, you are wrong. Is that okay? Yes, so you can check and then be sure of what you are doing. Can we do another one? Yes. Okay. Which one is this one? Okay, this one is sodium hydroxide. Volume. Hmm? Concentration. Yes. What is the question asking? The question is asking us to... Fine volume. Oh, 
Okay. So we are looking for volume. Here too, I have volume and they are asking me for volume. Now I've got here volume of water. Okay. What else do I have? Concentration is given. Oh, I have two concentrations. So one here, another one here. And I have one volume. And they're asking me volume of water. Wow. What should I do? Yes, can we work? Very simple. If I have two concentrations and a volume, then they say uh, 150 cm cubed of 0 0.25 mole per dm cube NaOH is diluted to one, 0 0.15 mole per dm cubed. So here too we use the dilution principle. Right, so initial volume is given, that is V1. Initial concentration given, 0 0.25. Then diluted to, so we have 0 0.15, that is the C2. So we can find V2, right? Okay. So from the dilution formula, C1 V1 equal to C2 V2. We are looking for V2, so make V2 the subject. C1 V1 on C2. So do the substitution, I will have V1, 150, times C1, 0 0.25, all on C2, 0 0.15. So V2 will give us 250 cm cubed. Is our answer reasonable? Yes. It's reasonable because... The diluted to concentration is less than the initial concentration. That is, concentration 2 is less than concentration 1. That should tell us that the volume has increased by adding water. That is why the question says we should find the volume of water added. The first volume, that is the initial volume, is 150. So that initial volume has been topped up with water. So the difference will give us the volume of water. Is it difficult? It's, it's very, very simple. Okay. So it means that volume of water should give me V2 minus V1. You see. So... V2 is 250 minus V1, 150. And that gives me 100 cm cubed. So you added 100 cm cubed of water to dilute 150 cm cubed of 0 0.25 mole per dm cubed NaOH to have a concentration of 0 0.15 mole per dm cubed. Is that okay? This simple, yes, yeah, very, very simple and straightforward. Can we continue? Yes, let's solve more questions because the more questions you solve, you become used to it. So let's look at this one. It's all about solutions, right? Yes. So you are given a solution of 14.8 mole per dm cubed NH3. How many cm cubed of this solution do you require to give 100 cm cubed of, of 1.00 mole per dm cubed NH3 when diluted? Okay. So we have an initial concentration and then required 
to give. So this is our final concentration. Sorry, final volume and then final concentration. So what are we looking for? How many cm cube of solution do you require? So we are looking for V1. So from the principle of dilution, we can have C1, V1, equal to C2, V2. Do we know C1? Yes. 14.8. Do we know V1? No. That is what we are looking for. Do we know C2? Yes. 1.00. Do we know V2? Yes. 100 cm cubed. So V1 equal to 1.00 times 100 all on 14.8. That gives me 1.00 times 100 on 14.8. That gives me 6. 6.76 cm cubed. You can run it to the nearest whole number that will give me 7 cm cubed. Are we okay? Yes. So it's as simple. Can we do more? Yes, let's do more. Determine the concentration of ACL solution with the following information. 36.5% purity and 1.2 grams per cm cubed density. Yeah. So from here, we have ACL stock solution. We want to calculate the concentration. We are talking about solutions, solutions, solutions. What do I have? Is this information enough? Yes, it's more than enough to solve the question. Percentage purity is given. And then density is given. What else do I need? From the question, we will need molar mass because we are talking about concentration. We will talk about amount of substance. But there is 1.2 grams per cm cube. So mass, once mass is involved, molar mass will have to come so that we calculate number of moles. And then, of course, the percentage purity will also come. So what should we do? We have to start from the density. So 1.2 grams per cm cube. That means 1 cm cube contains 1.2 grams, you see, of ACO in the Winchester bottle. So, 1,000 cm cubed contains how much? So, I have 1,000 on 1 times 1.2 grams. This is cm cubed. This is cm cubed. So it will cancel out, right? Yes. So what do we have there? 1.2 times 1,000. So we have 1,200 grams. This 1,200 grams Contains the ACL, pure ACL, plus impurities. That is why they have given us percentage purity. So if they give us the percentage purity, it means we have to calculate the pure mass of ACL, ACL in the container. So the pure mass of ACL equal to 
take the percentage purity of the mass calculated. So 36.5 on 100 times 1200. So what will it be? 5, 5 by 100. So 438 grams. You see that there is a difference? Yes. So the pure mass of ACL is 438 grams. The mass of ACL and the mass of the impurities give us 1200. So we can find the mass of the impurities, right? Take the 438 from that to 1200. 762 grams is for the impurities. You get okay so let's continue now we have our pure mass if we have mass then we can calculate molar mass right yes so have mass so mass of ACL is given we have calculated for it 438 grams we can calculate the molar mass of ACL. The relative atomic mass of H is 1. We have 1 there, so 1 times 1. Plus, that for chlorine is 35.5. So 1 times 35.5. So that gives me 36.5 grams per mole, you see. So I can calculate number of moles of ACL. So N of ACL equal to mass on molar mass. So mass is 438 and the molar mass is 36.5. So finally it reduces to so 438 divided by 36.5. That gives me 12 moles. It is simple. Yes, yeah, very, very simple. 12 moles. But the question says, we should calculate the concentration of ACO. And I know that concentration is C equal to N on V. V must always be in DM kit. So we know number of moles of ACO. So... What about volume? Do we know volume? Yes. We know volume. Because we use 1000 cm cubed. That is equivalent to 1 dm cubed. So our volume is 1 dm cubed. That is the standard. So therefore, I will have 12 moles on 1 dm cubed. That gives me 12 moles per dm cubed. You see? So that is the concentration of the ACO. So if it is in a Winchester bottle and you have been given these parameters, then you should be able to successfully calculate that. Is that okay? Yeah. Look at this one too. The same concept here. So how would you prepare... 1000 cm cube or 0 0.0500 mole per dm cube solution of A2SO4. How you prepare that one? I say, percentage purity is given, density is given. So can we do something? Yes, very, very simple. It's just like the one we saw a while ago. So let's do that, right? Yes. Okay. So here we are going to prepare a standard solution of A2SO4. So we have to calculate the concentration first. You get it. Before we can find the volume that we are going to dilute in a volumetric flask as we saw a while ago. So what do I do? Density is given, and that is where I need to start with. Okay, 
So I'll have to find the average because it's in a range. So density equal to 2.34 plus 2.35 all on 2. So that will give me, aha, uh -huh, yep. Okay. That will be, yeah, so you are right. 2.345. Grams per cm cubed. So from the earlier concept, I can have one cm cubed equal to 2.345 grams. So thousand of that gives me thousand on one times 2.345. That will give me 23 for grams okay but there is percentage purity 95% so you take the percentage purity and then find the concentration of the <laughs> of the solution <laughs> is that okay there is earlier concept so follow through to it to this one and assess yourself whether you are really following or not. Thank you so much for hanging around, even though it's a little late. God will bless you. Till we meet again, don't forget, keep on enjoying chemistry. My name, as usual, Wisdom Agbesinyala, with you one. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.